G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to do a bit of a teardown, not because I want to, but because I have to. I've got some Aeon My Commander goggles here. I've been using these for several months now and they work pretty well. I don't have too many complaints, except, except, sometimes they don't work. Um, there has been an increasing tendency for this thing just to go beep and go black. That's not good. It hasn't happened while I've been flying yet, but sometimes just as I'm getting ready to fly, it goes beep and goes black. There's nothing in the goggles and no amount of fiddling with the cable seems to do anything so it's not a fractured cable it's not a faulty wire from the balance port as far as i can tell it just seems to be completely random and of course if you are recording onto the micro sd card when it goes beep and reese and basically goes black then it won't record again onto the uh, the onto the card unless you take the card out and put it back in so there's something funny going on inside these goggles but there's it's only one thing worse then no FPV goggles, and that's a set of FPV goggles you cannot trust. Now, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I've got two sets of Sky Zones that do this, and now I've got the A on my commanders, and I'm using different batteries, different leads. What the hell's going on here? Is something in my head affecting the electronics in these goggles? I don't know, but it gives me a good opportunity to pull these things apart and just see what I can find inside. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be mechanical. No amount of banging, tapping or heating and cooling seems to change the thing. It just It's completely random. So it could be a bad solder joint on the board, but that would usually be kind of temperature sensitive, or it could just be a, a faulty piece of silicon. I don't know. And it pisses me off because I can't trust these. So I can't use them if I can't trust them. I don't want to be, you know, low and long way away and have my video go out on mini quad because it's a long walk and I don't need all the exercise. I have enough exercise in my life. So without further ado, let's rip these things apart. While I've got this off here, I'm going to show you one of the things I don't like about the commanders. Look at this lens. Look, it's kind of the IPD. There must be a cable or something in there snagging because it keeps jumping back and I've had no end of trouble with the IPDs on this thing. This one's fine. This one just keeps bouncing back. Quality control. We'll find out when we get inside. And here's a look at that rinky-dink little fan. Um, I took that off because I thought there may be a screw through there. There doesn't appear to be. Uh, now comes the fiddly bit of actually prizing these things apart without breaking anything. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Here we go. Um, let's get the, get the straps out of the way and the little pins. Because it's just going to be a pain in the backside. And here we go. Here is the insides of the Aomwe Commanders. Let's take a closer look because I haven't been in here before. Okay, here's the main board and here's the power supply. Look at this bodgy wire. What's going on there? Someone made a bit of a botch up in the old design department. They had to add a, con a conductor there later on. That diode looks a bit how you going too. Hmm, never mind. Um, let's move across. Now, um, this flat flex cable, yeah, that's all all right. I thought it was actually on crooked, but no, that's okay. Um, let's move across to the other side here. And we have, this is the board that does our HDMI interface. It does our DVR and and so forth and one thing i noticed immediately is oh my god quality control look look at this piece of flat flex here um i hope you can see it look it has been bent and twisted out of shape it's it's awful so they've crimped the edge here it's all rolled over maybe that's my problem i don't know it shouldn't be because well maybe it is maybe it's loading down the rail or something if it's got a short on it but that, that's awful the flat flex is actually bent back on itself terrible piece of uh, construction Probably can get a better angle on it here. See how it's a bit all bent and twisted on the edge? No, no, <laughs> not impressed, not impressed. Anyway, let's move across to the optics and the mechanics. That all looks, you know, okay. A lot of flat flex cable there, a lot of flat flex cable. But I guess when you've got bits that move like the, the lenses here, because these are the IPD adjustments, you've got to have something that's going to flex and not break over time. Flat flex is actually, they're called flat flex because they're flat and flexible. So. Yeah, that seems to work okay. There doesn't seem to be that spring back anymore on this lens that there was when the top was on. So I wonder if a piece of flat flex has got trapped. What about this side? This side seems okay too. It's um, it's free enough. So maybe there was something wrong with the way it was assembled. And after all, well, I think so because this piece of cable on the end here has been totally munted by the assembly process. Bad form. Okay, um, we've got a couple of 5.8 gigahertz receivers. There's one here. And there's another one, of course, on the other side, because this has got receiver diversity. There it is. And this flat flex going left, right, and center across. You have to be careful when I put it back together. Obviously, when they put it together, they were not careful. That was half the trouble. Now in here, this is our where our power comes in. So we're, what have we got here? A couple of diodes and stuff. 
I haven't actually looked in the soldering. Let's hang on a minute. No, no, more bodge. Look at this. This is like, what the hell? I've got these surface mount components up on the edges. What, why have they done that? Is this, they've used a different device to the one they designed for the board, I suppose. That's not good. Perhaps this explains why my system boots up badly all the time. And this soldering here is a bit how you go. And look, that's a bit shocking. Um, yeah, I wonder. I don't think this was a prototype. I think this was a production model. In fact, no, actually this was, when um, they said these were coming, they said there's been a delay because they're doing a new version. So this is actually an updated version, not the very original version. So there's really no excuse for this kind of thing going on in here. I'm not impressed at all uh, because, okay, the Almays are cheaper than Fat Sharks, but these are still an expensive piece of kit. I mean, video goggles are really an expensive piece of kit. So I'm disappointed in the attention to detail in here. And it probably explains why mine have gone all bloody intermittent on me because there's just so many things I've done wrong here. There's bodges, there's cables have been trapped, there's probably cables trapped for the IPDs which is why it was springing back. Hmm, ah, uh, yeah, not overly happy at this stage and of course in here is all the analog to digital conversion. This is where your, your uh, signal comes from your board here and it gets turned into digital signals to drive the LCD screens in here. So there's a little bit of power circuitry in here and so forth and Basically, just one large chip does all the hard work. So, hmm, it says 2016. And how long have I had these? I certainly haven't had them since 2016. But, uh, okay, I'm going to take a closer look around, see if I can find anything obviously wrong. I'll do some poking, but I won't have the camera because it's in the way. So I'll come back to you in a moment. Right, now I've had a good look over the goggles themselves. Couldn't find anything. I ran it with an external power source. No problems at all, which kind of led me back to this whole battery thing because I thought, I'm sure I've tried these goggles with a different lead and they did the same thing, but I wasn't 100% sure. And I'm really old, I forget whole lots of stuff. I forget more than I've ever known. So I thought, well, I'll just, just give this cable a bit of a torture test and just make sure. So I've got my meter on here. In fact, I'll turn the leads around so that it reads the right voltage, not a negative voltage. And I'll put my meter on the barrel connector here. 12.3 volts, that's nice. And you watch what happens to the meter when I... Is it? It's not going to do it now. What's the bit it won't do it now? Hang on, here we go. Let's move this around. Ah, did you see that? Hang on. There we go. Look, look, 0 0.2 volts. The lead is faulty. Oh, man. And I'm wondering, actually, I know I've got this other sky zones, sky zones do this. I'm going to check the leads on those as well. Maybe I've got a whole lot of leads that just are not reliable. And this one is not reliable. It's what tends to happen with these things is because they are subject to a lot of movement, um, the wires inside break. But then under normal circumstances, they still touch together. However, when it gets a bit hot and the plastic expands, then they get intermittent. Or if you put just a little bit of a side load on, they'll get intermittent. And I, I don't know, um, I will test my other leads because they have the same symptoms. And I'm thinking, here I am condemning the goggles, which actually, to be honest, they could be better. Uh, but it's, it's the leads. This came with the goggles, of course. So I am going to make, I think I've got a spare uh, lead. I'm going to make up a new lead. I'm going to replace that lead from the little circuit board there to there. I'm going to fly this week and just see if I get intermittent problems remaining because as I when I ran this from the bench supply there was no problems at all. So yeah, actually you know what I'll do is I might just run my, in fact I'm kind of interested in this. Going back to this circuit board again, let's just have a little bit more of a look here. I, I disconnected that power board, the power input board and uh, yeah, the soldering was pretty dodgy. I put a lot of diodes in circuit here. You've got two diodes there, and you've got another one here with this little bodge wire down in there. And then they've got all this power sort of filtering on this little connector board where you plug your balance lead in. Have they had a whole lot of troubles with transients causing the system to lock up, you know, intermittent just noise coming down this lead? Because I did notice that the, the dropout on this was really, really brief, but then once it went beep, it, would, it went dark the system would not reboot until you completely cycled the power. So even the smallest little drop in power to this, even for a brief moment, causes it to lock up and go black. With my sky zones, they would reboot. They would come back, the picture would come back. It would take a second or two for them to reboot, but they'd reboot. This one, once it goes beep and the lights go out, you cannot get it to start again without completely cycling the power, taking the lead out, plugging it back in. So I wonder if they've had some issues with noise coming down here causing it to reboot. So they've had to make some last minute changes, add an extra diode there, put this power filtering on here, which no other goggles have this. It's great. But instead of just having a um, some, some balance lead connectors, they've actually got a capacitor in there. And there's a resistor as well. I think there's something on the board. Maybe that's a surface mount 
inductor, I'm not too sure, I'll have a closer look later, but it's almost as if they found they had a problem and they had to do some bodges to make it better. So, hmm, never mind. Well, I'll put this back together, taking care that the cables don't snag so my IPDs will work properly, hopefully, and this other cable, this flat flex up here that's just already been bodged during, during assembly isn't going to get any worse. And then I will uh, do some flying over the weekend with a different lead, one I know to be good because it's brand new out of the box and I will test it rigorously and I'll let you know next week what I find. But in the meantime, yeah, the Sky Zones, oh, sorry, the, the Aon Ways, they, they do work nicely when they're working, but I'm a little less confident in them now than I was before I pulled them apart. However, time will tell and I will keep an eye on them and let you know if I have any issues. And uh, what's the name? Uh, Justin Bardwell said he's sending me the EA Sheen video glasses, so I'll be keen to look at those. And I do have something else that arrived. Hang on a moment. Hope I don't drift out of wireless mic range. Oh, I've lost it. Just a moment. I'm going. I'm, I'm leaving the building. Please just amuse yourselves while I go and get the package that arrived today. And it is a, here it comes, by DHL, no less. I don't know why I'm bringing it out because it's not even opened yet, but da da. There you go. Now, this is a set of a video visor box goggles. You know, I'm not a great fan of box goggles. I've I, I much prefer video glasses because when you get old, um, even with, with box goggles, even though you have lenses so that your eyes don't have to focus quite so closely, you still have to cant them inwards. You still go cross-eyed because you're looking at something that's very close to your face. So to have both eyes focused on the center of the screen, you're cross-eyed. And that can put a lot of strain on an old person like me. And so I don't like box goggles much. But, but, but these things are the, apparently, I haven't opened them, but they say you can wear glasses with them. And that's brilliant because box goggles are the perfect thing to give people who you want to take for a ride when you're flying FPV. Because they don't have to mess around with IPDs and if they've got glasses, it doesn't matter. Oops, it doesn't matter. They can just put them on and enjoy the experience. So I'll be reviewing those very shortly. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Sorry this wasn't more exciting, but you did get to see inside the Aomai Commander video glasses. And I have to say, for the money, they still work really well. But I'll be keeping a much closer eye on them now that I've seen the little bodges going on inside. Thanks for watching. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I will do my best to answer them. In the meantime, bye for now. But wait, don't go yet. I found out why the IPD is bouncing back. This flat flex here, this one here, the one that's been munted on the corner, when you put this down here, it actually interferes with the flat flexes that go to the, uh, the left-hand screen here. So what's happening is this flat flex and the white flat flex are clashing, and that's why it's springing back. That's not very good. They should have actually run the flat flex around this side of the board to keep it away from this area where that flat flex curls into. Maybe they assembled it wrong? I don't know. Um, perhaps someone else has pulled theirs apart. But uh, now that there's a quite a sharp kink on there, I'm not going to put it around the other way because it could actually fracture the flat flex cable. Damn it, I'll just have to try and use a little bit of hot glue or something just to make sure this is right out of the way. But uh, yeah, see what I can do, but it's a bit how you're going. Thanks for watching.